oh, I really love it when I get up here and I smile and people smile back. It's really neat. Um, certainly welcome each of you here this, with us this morning. And if you're visiting with us, uh, we certainly want to welcome you and uh, your honored guest. If you'd take a few minutes to not run off afterwards and let us uh, say hello to you, that'd be great as well. Uh, we're going to be in Joshua today, so we're going to actually do a series through the book of Joshua, not every verse, but just to select passages. So if you want to get warmed up for it, maybe a project for this week would be read the book of Joshua and uh, sort of get yourself um, uh, centered on what, what's going on there. The first memory verse I remember teaching our son Joshua was Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. And um, certainly there's, it's true that certain Old Testament um, verses, they really have a strong thrust for our New Testament living, right? This is one of those verses that, you know, when you read this, it absolutely applies to us today in our context. And uh, it's words that we need to take to heart, words that we speak out loud, the words that we can meditate on, words that we practice daily in our lives as we live in obedience to Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives. Joshua 1.9, I actually, <laughs> crazy, in the, middle, in the middle of the night last night, I thought, I didn't put the first line of, the, of that verse. Uh, I, I, I know this verse, but uh, anybody know what the first line is? If you've got your Bible open, you already know it, right? Have I not commanded? There you go. God is speaking, and God says, have I not commanded you? And this is what his command has been. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. New Testament says the same thing. It just does it in different ways. And so when we look at this, oh, no, that's Old Testament, that's not for us. Well, no, it's absolutely for us. When uh, it's reverse order, but in 1 Corinthians 13, 16, he says, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, Okay, so I love the next verse too, but anybody know what the next verse is? Let all that you do be done in love. That's like, that sums it all up, right? That's what it is, to be courageous and be strong. Sometimes we need to love, but it's not so easy. And so to be faithful, we need to do that. And of course, we know the very last words of Jesus in the book of Matthew are, uh, I will be with you always to the end of the age. And so this idea of God always being with us wherever we go, Christ is with us wherever we go, but there's still this command that we need to be strong. We need to be courageous as we um, go on our faith journey. See, one of the main themes in the book of Joshua is this, active faith. Active faith. And so if you're a person, and, and I, we've all been here at one time or another, where you feel like you're just faith is just sort of there, and it needs to be more engaged, it needs to be more active, well, this is the series that you're looking for. God's word is going to speak to you through the next several weeks as we look at this and we say, okay, this is what it is to have active faith for God to truly be alive in my life, in our lives as a church at Bram Lee. Um, the people of Israel, they had what at this point? They had wandered in the wilderness for almost 40 years, right? They hadn't gone into the promised land because the generation before had listened to 10 of the 12 spies. Uh, two, of those tw two of those spies had a promise, positive uh, report. Anybody name, know the name of those two positive report spies? Joshua and Caleb, right? And so here we have, we're coming back around, one of the only two people of that generation to go into the promised land, he's now going to be, God's calling him to lead those people because he was a person who believed, who trusted in God. And so now he's going to have the opportunity to put his faith into action and lead the people of God into the promised land. But the people of that former generation had all died off. Moses had also died off. And now there was a time that God was calling his people to take a step forward in faith. Now it was a time for Joshua to accept God's call and to lead the people into the promised land. Let's go ahead and read together the first six, whoops, we're going to get there, back, back, come on, it's not going, there we go, Joshua 1, 1 to 6. After the death of Moses, a servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, 
Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I'm going to give them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will give to them, just as I promised Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. See, God was commissioning Joshua to lead the people into the land that God had promised Moses, into the land that he had promised their fathers, going back as far as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the promises that he had made. And he was keeping his promises. Not only was God keeping his promises, but he was also making another promise to Joshua, that I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. So if God was going to be with Joshua, then why did he have to say to him, you need to be strong and courageous? And if the promise of Jesus is to be with us always to the end of the age, then why would we have similar command in the New Testament? We need to be courageous. We need to be strong. We need to stand firm in our faith. Why do we need those commandments if God is with us? Well, we recognize, don't we, that I know God is with us. It doesn't mean that the road is easy. In fact, we know the road is actually hard. The people of Joshua's day, what they were going to do, well, they're sure they're going to go take the land, and it, and it was just going to be theirs, right? They, nothing to it, right? They were going into battle, right? They were going into battle. They're going into the unknown as well, a place they'd never been before. Is the unknown a, a friendly place? Well, it might not be so bad, but we don't know. It's unknown. And so there's this idea to step forward in faith. And how do we step forward in faith? Well, we know that God is going to be with us, but it doesn't mean that it's not a little bit scary. And so there's this effort that we have to put in that God says, okay, I'm going to be with you, so that's why you can be strong and courageous. But listen, you have to be strong and courageous. I will be with you, but guess what? You have to take the step. I'm not going to force you into the land. You have to go into the land. You have to obey my voice. I will be with you, but you have to step forward. You need to be strong. You need to be courageous. We know that God is always the promise keeper, right? He always keeps his promises. And yet there's this idea that we're going into a spiritual battle. That it takes courage to step out in faith. To stand firm in the faith when our, our co-workers, maybe you have a co-worker, then you talk to them about what your kids are watching on television. You mention the fact that, well, this, this TV program came up and there was a drag queen that got up and the, this drag queen was teaching my children about the shapes and about the colors. And I said, no, we can't watch that. And they said, what do you mean you can't watch that? What's wrong with you? Get with the program. Don't you know the world around us? We need to be inclusive. We need to... And we're saying, well, that's not what I want my children to learn about. Or maybe you're at work and you, you're because of your hatred of sin. You don't want to have dishonesty within the workplace. And you say, no, we can't do that. We need to do this. This is what's right. Now you get pulled aside. And, no, no, this is what the company wants to do. We need to get ahead. You need to, take, you need to cut this corner. You need to do that. It can be a hard battle. We find it everywhere around us where there's this opposition. The world has a whole different view than what God's view is. But what view, view is ours? We know what our view is supposed to be, right? How do we do? Well, maybe we need to be strong. We need to be courageous. The Hebrew writer reminds us to look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. See, we're running this race of life, but this race of life is an endurance race. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. Jesus himself, what did he have to do? He had to face the cross in that context. And part of the reason he's writing those words to the Hebrews, the, the people that he's writing to, is the fact that, that this, that, look, you need to realize that you're in a journey and it's not going to be easy. There's going to be tough times and it's going to be an endurance rate. It's going to take some time. You know, it's going to go on and on and on. And you're going to find yourself maybe feeling like faint-hearted and weary. But I'm telling you this so that you will not be faint-hearted 
and weary. Because even Jesus himself faced the same kind of hostilities against sinners that you're facing. And let me say this. When you think about Jesus facing this hostility against sinners, it's not against the, the bad sinners. We call them, you know, the ones that are absolute, oh, you know, the person that's an axe murderer and the... Uh, no, this is the religiously upright sinners. Everybody around them thought that they were the good people. They're the ones that put Jesus to death. Now, everybody was responsible, but the ones that propagated the, the action was there. They were called the sinners. They're the hostile sinners, and yet the people would say, oh, wait, wait, they're the religious upright people, aren't they? And so when we look around us and we see attacks, and it seems like, oh, from the world's perspective, this is all good, this is all good, this is upright, this is... Pro well, no, is it match up with God? And so the encouragement for us is, okay, this is going to happen. And I'm writing you, look to Jesus, because I don't want you to go weary and faint-hearted in this. I want you to be encouraged in this, that you can get through this. Jesus will be with you. He went through it himself. He understands you. You can do this. And so be strong and courageous. When I was talking to my son this past week, um, we had a lot to talk about this week because he had gone on a chorus trip and so some decisions coming up in the next little while, but I told him that I was going to be preaching on Joshua, and I said, oh, I'm going to, are you guys ready for this? I told, the, told him that um, I'm going to have the congregation memorize Joshua 1-9 on Sunday. We're not leaving until they get it. No. <laughs> uh, and he says, well, he says, maybe because since a very young age, he always knew Joshua 1-9. He says, doesn't everybody who's been a Christian for any period of time know Joshua 1-9? Like, isn't that the one that everybody knows from the Old Testament? He says, well, yeah, maybe they should know it, but they may not know it, okay? And let me suggest to you, it's okay if you don't know it yet. Today you can know it, okay? And you can get it in your mind and in your heart, and it'll be a part of your life because it really, it's, it's really a principle that we live by under Jesus Christ as well. And so um, we're going to do this. I, I, I missed the first line, but you can remember that the first line is God is calling, talking to us, right? And he says, have I not commanded you? Are you guys ready for participation? Everybody's a little excited, right? Uh, some of you are not. It's like, oh, please, do we have to do this? And other ones are like, okay, great, this is good. It's like we're all in this together. We're all a family. And so what I want us to do is, let's see. Uh, yeah, If you're on the right over there, which is my left, but you're on the right, then when it says, wait a minute, is that right? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, here it's the opposite up there. Okay, it's mirror image or whatever. Okay. So if you're on the right, I'll say it with you, but I want you to say the first line, the R line, and then if you're on the left, you say the left line. Okay, you ready? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. The Lord your God. Good job. Now, I, I know you, that you're feeling like, wait a minute, I didn't get to see the other side, so, so we'll fix that. Okay, so which one is... Uh, Whatever side it was, is it, are you guys first? Okay. It's, it's backwards on the screen, so it's like, I, I'm confused. Okay, now you guys get to say, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be ashamed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yeah. Okay, that's the first time through. You've got it already, though, right? Pretty much, right? We know what this is about. Joshua continues from there. And he says this. Okay, so he already said, be strong and courageous, right? Be strong and courageous, be strong. Now he says, only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all that the law that, of the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but shall, you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do all that is according, do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. See, in the first nine verses of Joshua, three times he says, be strong and courageous. 
Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. In verse 7, be strong and very courageous. You think that's important? Why would he repeat it over and over like that unless it was important? Because it's important. It was important for Joshua to hear as he was leading the, about to lead the people, but it's important for us as well. Uh, he gives this formula. We think, well, how do we become, how, do, how are we strong and courageous? Well, first of all, we're strong and courageous because we know that God is going to be with us. But he also tells us a bit of a formula here. One is strong and courageous by being careful to obey all that God commanded. Okay? All the words of the law of Moses. Now, in our context, is it all the words of the law of Moses? Anybody? No. Okay? It's not all the words of the law of Moses. In our context, it's all the words of Jesus Christ and his apostles. Now, most of the time, most of the time, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, they match up anyways. Because, you know, the principles that are there are still fought, carried forward in the, in the New Covenant as well. But a lot of the things like the sacrificial system, Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of those things. And so now we are under the new system. And so we recognize that one of the things that we can do to be strong and courageous is this idea of being completely at one with the word of Christ Jesus our Lord and his apostles. And so how do we do that? Well, first of all, maybe we, you know, we, we know this verse, right? Because um, the fact is that we're going to be strong and courageous, and, and being strong and courageous means, you know, uh, oh, wait, who's on the right again? Are you guys on the right? Say it again. Be strong and courageous. Oh, wait. Yeah, you already have it, right? See, we can live by the words of Joshua 1 9 by being careful to obey all God's word because God's promise is success if we do so. Okay? We will succeed. If we hold on to God's word, we do not let it depart from our mouth. If we meditate on it day and night, and if we do it. See, so here we have in that passage, look in verse 8, he gives us in a formula of, well, how is it that we're going to hold on to this word of God, keep it at the center of our lives, and make it in a personal way? We might say it this way. Three steps to help us keep God's word at the center of our living is, number one, well, we need to speak God's word. He says, let it not depart from your mouth. We might speak his word, read it, sing it. When Paul writes to Timothy, we had a passage from Timothy today. You know, one of the things that he says to Timothy in that, in that uh, letter is that, you know, you need to devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture. That's a good thing, to let that be out loud for people to hear and, and you to be, as a leader within the church, to, to always be putting forth God's word. We can do that in our public reading. We can do that in our public teaching. We can do that when we paraphrase, maybe uh, we're reading children's books that are a paraphrase, really, of the Word of God, and, but it's at a children's level. And so as we read them a Bible story to our children or to our grandchildren, we are, again, speaking that word out loud. It's, it's what we talk about all the time around our house at the dinner table. Do we just talk about the weather, and do we just talk about the sports, and we just talk about school, or do we talk about God and about His plans and how He's at work in our lives? Do we talk about the Word of God? When something happens, do we say, oh, that's just like when Jesus did this? And we paraphrase a story in Jesus' life. This is to speak God's word, for it to be on our hearts, on our minds, all the time. It was interesting um, talking about um, uh, Josh and a lot to talk about. I, I mentioned he was at the chorus trip in March, like the March break, right? They had a chorus trip, and they went down south. And on the way back, they went to Washington, D.C., one of the things that he was just like, this is phenomenal, I can't believe it. You, you, you've got to go and see this, Dad. Or Pa, he calls me Pa, so, you know, that's what I am, Pa. He says, you've got to go see this, Pa. And it's called the Museum of the Bible. It's in Washington, D.C. I guess it, it's probably, he said he thought it opened around 2017. Um, but he says, you know, one of the things, they had this exhibit in there. It was a, video, a virtual reality thing. It's like you were zooming around the city, the, the Washington, D.C. area, and you were going to all the monuments and all the, the government buildings and it would come along and it would zoom in on a part of the building and it would be like, um, you know, 
be strong and courageous. I don't know if that one's one of them. But it was, there was memory verses. There was verses of the Bible everywhere around the capital of the United States of America. The word of God was being spoken out loud to everybody who was visiting. Everybody comes to visit there and to see all the places. If you look in the right spot on the monument or on the building, you see God's word, God's word, God's word, speaking. The question is whether people are listening. Unfortunately, we look at the United States of America and Canada, right? We're built on Christian principles. That's the foundation of our country. And most of Lee, we've thrown it out the window. But God's work still speaks. Maybe the world around us is a little bit, are we listening? We can say, oh yeah, those people out there, but what about what? Like, let's turn it back to, well, what about me? Am I speaking God's word? Is it on my mouth all the time? And so that's one of the things, this, one of these steps to keep it at the center of our living is for us to be saying it, to be speaking it. The second thing that he says is to meditate on it day and night. Now I know many of you are very familiar with Psalm 1, right? Right? What is the first three verses of Psalm 1? Blesses the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is on the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. What's he like? He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And all that he does, he prospers. This is what he says here too in Joshua. This is what happens when the word of the Lord is central in our lives, when we're speaking it, when we meditate upon it day and night. How are we supposed to meditate it? Yeah, I know. Slow me down, right? When you get excited, I've said this before, you get a little bit excited and it's like you, you speed up a bit, right? Okay. Um, it reminds me of that, that um, what is it, Psalm 19 about the strong man running with joy. Like he's, because he's, he's, like, you know, he's excited. And so, uh, but uh, what was I saying? Meditate. Yeah, how can we meditate on God's word if we're not familiar with it? You know, have you been there? I've been there all the time. You know, you're at night and you're, you're starting to go to sleep, but your mind goes to the things of God and does a verse come? Many times a verse comes for me. And so that's the first, that's the last thing that's on my mind. That's filling my heart. Because I'm meditating on it, not just in the daytime, but in the night, because I've already put it in my, I put it in my brain, I put it in my heart. And so it's important for us to get it inside us, so, it's so a part of our souls, who we are as our being, that God's word, that's, that's who we are. We speak it, we meditate upon it, day and night. Of course, all that is to get us to prosper, to be successful in our godly living, to be faithful to God, to have active faith. But then, really, that only happens if we go the next step, right? We can say it out loud. I mean, it should theoretically happen anyways. If we're always saying it, and if it's always on the meditation of our heart, it should actually just flow out because if it's really on the inside, then it has to come out. You ever had some really exciting news that you've, that you've got in here and it's like, how easy is that to keep in if it's like it's really exciting news? But it's not just about sharing the exciting news with our voices. It's about that being a part of our lives as we do the word of God. What does James say, tell us about hearing God's word and then not doing it? He says, it's like a man looking at his face in the mirror, and then he goes away and he immediately forgets what he looked like. Like, what? That's what he's saying. No, no, how can that possibly be? If we're truly, if God's word is what we're speaking all the time, if it's what it's meditating upon us, us all the time, then it has to be what we are doing because we don't just look at it as something nice to do. It's like, check, I, I did my memory work today. Check, I did my Bible study today. Check, I went to church on Sunday. It's not about a checklist. It's about a life list. Well, it's not a list, I guess. It's just life. Just life, life. That's what it is. 
So three steps to help us keep God's word at the center of our lives as we speak it, we meditate on it, we do it. God was asking Joshua to lead his people into a land that he, they had not been to before. Well, he had, Joshua had, but everybody else hadn't besides Caleb. He was asking them to step out in faith. He was saying, you know, like, I've commanded you, Joshua. And I think if he was here this morning, and I think he is here this morning, is he not? He's speaking to us through his word right now, and he's saying, this applies to you people in Bramalee, my faithful family, that you also need to be, let's say it together, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Tell that to your soul every day this week. Maybe twice a day, maybe five times a day. Tell that to your soul. This is God speaking to you. Say that out loud. Meditate upon it. Let it be who you are. That you really truly trust God as you go through whatever you're going through as you're facing whoever you're facing at work that wants to start an argument with you, or whatever. Not that we want to be argumentative. No, not by any means, but we want to be firm in our faith. And so that's going to take some courage. That's going to take some strength. But where is our strength found? It's not found in me. It's not found in you. It's found in the Lord God and in His words in our lives. These words apply to us today. They apply to us every day. A big part of God enabling us to live these words comes from us obeying his teachings, speaking the word, meditating on his word, doing the word. You know, when Jesus gave the great commission to the 11, they were told what? They were told to make disciples, going and baptizing and teaching people. And God said, Jesus said to them, like, I'm going to be with you. But first, you need to step out and you need to do that. Like, you need to do that. I'm going to be with you. But you need to be strong and courageous. You need to go out there and you need to share. Some people say, well, that was for the 11. Yeah, so he was teaching the 11 that. And they were supposed to teach others to do exactly what he just told them. So that means that's us too, right? It's us too. Brethren, if we're going to lead others to Jesus Christ, before we can lead others to Jesus Christ, we need to be following his lead, right? We need to be following his lead. That's what God has said. God is, he's, he, he's talking to the whole people in a sense, but he's talking specifically to the one who wa- he wants to lead the rest of them. Think about that as God speaking to you personally right now. That he's saying to you, I have a plan for you, for you to lead other people to know Jesus Christ as well. But what that means is you have to be strong and courageous and you need to follow my lead first. If you can't follow my lead, how are you supposed to lead anybody else? That's God's plan for you and I. That takes different, that looks like different things in different people's lives, but the, the, the principle is always the same. That we follow God's lead so that we can also lead other people in the ways of God. And how are we going to do that? Well, we got to heed God's voice, right? What is it again? Be strong and courageous. He says it again be strong and very courageous. He says it again be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Amen?